Stephen Paddock as a kind, caring, quiet man. I loved him and hoped for a quiet future together with him. That was the attorney for Mary Lou Danley, the girlfriend of domestic terrorist Stephen Paddock, reading her statement about her relationship with the Las Vegas shooter who killed 58 people and injured 490, 489 other concert goers on Sunday night, of course, as he was shooting from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino. Danley was in the Philippines visiting family when the shootings took place and returned back to the United States voluntarily. She was met at the airport by FBI investigators. She said Paddock bought her the ticket and then wired her $100,000 to buy a house there. She said she had no clue what he was up to. He never said anything to me or took any action that I was aware of that I understood in any way to be a warning that something horrible like this was going to happen. It never occurred to me in any way whatsoever that he was planning violence against anyone. Of course, law enforcement, they're still trying to understand Paddock's motive for the shooting rampage and Las Vegas Sheriff Joe Lombardo seemed to suggest yesterday that Paddock might have had help. It's troublesome that this individual was able to move this amount of gear into a hotel room uh, unassisted. Um, it's troublesome for the amount of stuff that he had at both residents. Um, uh, unassisted. Um, so uh, there's people that know this individual. There's people that can help us understand this individual. All right, folks, uh, new pictures obtained by the Daily Mail show some of the 23 weapons Paddock had smuggled into the hotel suite, including assault rifles and spent ammo, as well as Paddock's body lying on the floor after he turned a gun on himself. Now, Democrats in Congress are now calling for stricter gun control, asking Trump, Donald Trump and Republicans for their support. And I'm angry, angry that we are here yet again. Angry that Sandy Hook and 20 dead first graders weren't enough to spark change. Angry that it took 477 days for Pulse to be surpassed as our nation's worst mass shooting. I'm angry because I know that we will be back here again and again and again until something changes. Now is the time to come together. Be responsible. Democrats, Republicans, everyone. We must never stop fighting. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> But it's unlikely Trump will give Democrats any support. Yesterday, he flew to Las Vegas to meet with law enforcement officials and some of, some of the injured still in hospitals. A leaked copy of White House talking points on the shooting downplays the role that gun control, uh, gun control bill could have prevented Sunday's massacre or any future mass shootings. Now, some of those talking points include, let's gather the facts before we make sweeping policy arguments for curtailing the Second Amendment. We welcome a reasoned and well-informed debate on public safety and our constitutional freedoms, but we reject the false choice that we can't have both. New laws won't stop a madman committed to harming innocent people. They will curtail the freedoms of law-abiding citizens, and we've seen terrorist attacks committed with knives by people driving cars into crowds and hijacking planes. Some of America's cities with the strictest gun laws have the highest rates of gun violence. Examples include Chicago last year had over 4,300 shooting victims. Baltimore last year had over 900 shooting victims. Let's go to our panel. Uh, A. Scott Bolden, legal analyst and chairman of the National Bar Association PAC, Julian Malvo, economist and president emerita at Bennett College and host of It's Personal with Dr. J podcast, Ralph Chittams, Republican strategist and principal of Black Elephant Consultants. All right, Ralph, I want to start with you. So it's quite interesting. Interesting that the, that the Donald Trump talking points uh, talk about other terroristic acts that have taken place, but Donald Trump himself and his administration and Sarah Huckabee Sanders refuse to call this terrorism. So it's amazing how their talking points mention terrorism, but they don't want to call what Stephen Paddock did uh, terrorism or call him a domestic terrorist. Well, it was an act of terror, period, end of discussion. I mean, I, I don't know how, so why, so how else you describe why do you it. Think, why do you think they won't do it? I have no idea. Because clearly, anyone, any individual 
who commits an act like that is committing an act of terror. You know, just like when we talk about what's going on in Chicago, those individuals who are going through and committing all those crimes in Chicago, those are also domestic terrorists and they should be called out as such. I have no idea why people don't want to call what clearly is what it is. This guy Paddock, you know, if in fact he is the, the shooter as is being alleged, that was an act of terror, period, end of discussion. You know, uh, Julian, at the bottom line is in this country, in this country, for some reason, when a white man commits a crime, uh, folks do not want to call it domestic terrorism. We start coming up, well, he was a lone wolf. He acted alone. <laughs> if you kill 58 people, uh, you fire the, that, that amount of weapons, you are a domestic terrorist. Timothy McVeigh was a domestic terrorist. Right. Yes. yes. Uh, right. Donald Trump doesn't want to call it that. Yet when you had the incident in London, we literally, within minutes of it happening, he called it terrorism. So he'll call something across the pond terrorism or will not call what took place in Las Vegas terrorism. You know, Roland, you're absolutely right. And this is just absurd. There are people who are planning to move to Las Vegas. The papers have interviewed some of them who now will not move. They're afraid to move to Las Vegas. You have people, this has put a chilling effect on outdoor events, concerts, and things like that. That is terror. Terror is an attempt to intimidate. And that's what that man did. Instead, uh, 49, 40, whatever number he is, 45, that's right, is running around talking about he was mentally ill. He doesn't know whether he was mentally ill or coldly calculated or not. All these people are trying to make excuses for this man. Imagine that a person of color had been up there. Imagine that someone who was Muslim had been up there. Immediately it would be terrorism, and it's terrorism now. The, these folks are shilly-shallying around the Second mm -hmm. Amendment because the fact is that this is what 45 used to get himself into public office. He is basically sleeping with the National Rights Association, Re National right. Rifle Association, sleeping with them and afraid of them, and most politicians are afraid of them. So we, really, if we want to talk about terrorists, we could talk about the NRA as a terrorist organization. And no, y'all, you can't have my address. <laughs> uh, and again, Scott, Scott, I think what you're what you're seeing here is that obviously uh, this is who Donald Trump is appealing to. He constantly talked about uh, Hillary Clinton taking away Second Amendment gun rights. They don't want to say anything here, but it also speaks to what America has always done. It's just like when people talk about this was the worst shooting, uh, the worst mass shooting in American history. It's if you ignore what happened to Native Americans and African Americans, oh. uh, and and they, there's just this unwillingness of white America to call call it what it is, domestic terrorism. And this administration, remember, has pulled back on the funds in the Department of Justice that targeted white supremacist groups uh, <laughs> to focus more on ISIS when, when the FBI has said white domestic terrorists, white supremacists are a greater threat to Americans than ISIS. And they kill more police officers than African Americans. Here's the bottom line, though. Uh, what <laughs> the, the, it seems like in Trump world, you have to be black or brown to be labeled a terrorist. And if you're white and you commit a mass murder, then all murderers or become a mass murderer, then you, uh, you, you are something different. You're mentally ill. Yeah, right. The, the bottom line here is this. What does the Second Amendment have to do with this terrorist act? Why are they cloaking themselves in the Second Amendment and their right to bear arms? 47 guns, 100 guns, four different homes, 500 shot, over 500 shot. What does that have to do with the Second Amendment? Who has a right to own weapons of mass destruction? Why would I need an AK-47? Because I'm a gun enthusiast? Then keep it and store it at a, at a range, right? Why can I buy 100 weapons over four years simply because I'm, I don't have a criminal record? This is idiocy. It's insanity. And people are dying, and Republicans are still cloaking themselves in this Second Amendment. It's borders on the nonsense. But here's the fundamental it's issue. Dangerous here's, uh, America. Here, it's dangerous here, for America. It's dangerous for America. So here's a question. Here's a question for all of you. Okay, so we've had Sandy Hook, 20 kids murdered. We have 58 people killed here as well, murdered. The question, very simple, are you going to see Congress move? And now, I'm not asking just with Democrats, but when will people of conscience rise up? I keep seeing all these polls saying people want more gun control. When are you going to see 5, 10, 20,000 people descend upon Capitol Hill, putting maximum pressure on uh, these members of Congress? At the end of the day, unless 
people power exactly. happens, nothing is going to happen but when it Roland, comes to guns. We have seen people come to the Hill to talk about gun control. We have seen people come to the Hill to demand. We've seen mothers of the movement. We've seen white women. We've seen all kind of people come. But here's the bottom line. The National Rifle Association is ringing the bell, and they're winning the propaganda war. Last evening, there another network had uh, Speaker Pelosi, um, or Minority Leader Pelosi. I'm delusional. I want her to be Speaker again. Uh, <laughs> but in any case, they had her on, and a woman, relatively young white woman, said to her, why is it fair for me not to have a gun when I need to defend myself? And I'm thinking, okay, you're sitting in Las Vegas at a concert, and uh, gunshots are coming at you from 32 floors, and you've got your Roscoe, and you're going to point it back up there and defend yourself? Really? But this is the kind of rhetoric that's been out there so that they reached out now, and you have more women. So Julian, Julian. Yes, sir. First of all, here's the deal. I understand your point when it came to uh, all of the mothers who marched, but this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Monday through Thursday when they are here. I'm talking about that level of pressure. Ralph, what I'm talking about is wherever these members of Congress go, they are met by protesters. They are met by people who are demanding action. And then those very people who are turning out in mass numbers, they must also, the way you get their attention is when you begin to throw people out of office. As long as those individuals say this is one of the issues they care about, and it's not like the NRA <clears throat> where it's the most fundamental issue, you're going to have this problem. I tell people in the ed reform movement, you want to have multiple issues out here. No, the reason the NRA is so successful is because there's only one issue they care about, Second Amendment. You will never see them send a press release out about same-sex marriage or about affirmative action or about DACA. All they care about are guns. But you also, have to fight. Uh, you have to fight them like the way they also fight. But, but, Roland, but, but, but my point but, was, if I could just let me just respond to this Ralph, real quickly. One, one, my point, Roland, was this: the way the, 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 the hearts and minds. You have middle Americans who decry what happened in Las Vegas. Really decry this woman that I was talking about. I wasn't off point. What I was trying to say is, these are the kind of people who ought to be with us, meeting that congressperson every day. But they're not because the NRA has won the propaganda war and made them feel that some essential right of theirs has been infringed upon. No, but, but, but also, but one thing we also need is, to... We what need, I'm saying is, the, the folks with gun control are not as good as any narrative. Ralph, go ahead, then no, Scott, right. I'm going to break. But also, it's also sort of a false argument to try to separate this into Democrats and Republicans because there are millions of Democrats who are members of the NRA who are strong advocates of the Second Amendment. So, you know, trying to turn this into a politically divisive argument, honestly, is a dog that won't hunt because we could fill a stadium Scott, with Democrat it, gun owners. It, it, it'll right. hunt, but here's the bottom line. One, we need a counter-organization that's similarly focused like the NRA. And secondly, we need to separate these representations from being able to own a gun. Like, I'm for gun ownership, quite frankly, but I'm certainly not for mass uh, weapons of mass destruction to own them and not regulate them and have some type of gun control. So why can't we have both? counter-organization and separate the gun ownership from these weapons of mass destruction and their ability to All buy right. them at gun shows and close, let's close the loophole. You can have both. Now let me... Now, let me also say this here. There is one Republican congressman, Bill Flores, out of Texas, who has proposed uh, getting rid of these, uh, these gun stocks. But here's the deal. Gun owners are fearful of that. They've been rushing out and buying mm -hmm. up those mm -hmm. as fast as possible. Yep. So you see exactly what happens uh, when fear is used. We, we saw it for eight years of President Barack Obama. Now fear is being used to drop, drop up gun sales again. And what went up in the wake of the shooting in Las Vegas? The, the stocks of gun manufacturers. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m on TV One.